Greetings, church. This is Pastor Steve Aldridge from Chowchilla First Assemblies of God with a thought for the day. Today we're going to deviate a little bit from what we've been doing in Psalms, and we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 53, verses 2 through 6. Today is Good Friday, a day in which we reflect on the death of Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. Isaiah chapter 53 is a prophecy regarding the the uh, the death of Christ and, and the way that uh, he would bear upon himself the sins of humanity. Let's read it together. Let's start in verse 2. That will give us an idea, a little bit of how people viewed him. And then we'll see from verse 4 on, on how he gave himself for us. In verse 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no stately form or splendor. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected, forsaken by men, a man of sorrows, pains, and acquainted with grief, sickness. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Verse 4, surely he, was, he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, and carried our sorrows or our pains, yet we esteemed or, didn't reckon, or we esteemed or reckoned him stricken, smitten, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded, pierced through, for our transgressions. He was bruised, crushed, for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, blows that cut in, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, has caused to land on him the iniquity of us all. The iniquity of us all. What we have here in verses 2 through verse 3 is how the world viewed Jesus, or how the world would view Jesus. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no stately form or splendor. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Verse 2 just basically says that Christ didn't have any physical attributes that people would be drawn to. That people would somehow say, wow, look at him. There's a man among men. That wasn't what, what Jesus presented. What this was, was a, a man who looked like any other man, but not just a man. The Son of God incarnate. He is despised and rejected, forsaken by men, a man of sorrows, pains, and acquainted with grief, sickness, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. The prophet Isaiah right now is explaining that, that when people would, not only was Jesus someone that was just of ordinary appearance, but that he would be rejected by those who heard him. Now we know that Jesus had great crowds following him. We know that people wanted to see people healed from their sicknesses. We know that many people heard him teach and they said, wow, he speaks or preaches or teaches words that, that we haven't heard. He's an extraordinary communicator. Well, in this situation here, what we see is, 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 is the crowd that once followed after him for what they could receive from him towards the end, just before his crucifixion, most had abandoned him. Most had abandoned him. And in that situation, abandoning him, what happened as they abandoned him, when he was in the midst of his suffering, even his own disciples, abandoned him. Verse 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, our pains. Now, this is referenced back to verse 3 where he talks about he himself was a man of sorrows, a man acquainted with grief or sickness, pains. Jesus, living here on earth, was surrounded by people who were suffering, even in his own family. Now, sometimes we get this idea that Jesus, there was no issues in his life. There were no issues in his family. But Jesus was acquainted with grief. He was acquainted with sorrow. Can you imagine the Son of God walking among humanity as a human being, 
seeing the suffering of God's created, God's creation. Those who were created in the image of God. Wow. I can imagine that Jesus Christ was filled with pain. But it says in verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, our pains. Yet we esteemed him, reckoned him stricken, smitten, struck down by God, and afflicted. When we look at what Christ went through, starting with the, the Last Supper, where he is with his disciples, giving him what we, what we celebrate every almost every month in some churches every Sunday, the communion, the Lord's Supper, as he was with them, his heart was heavy. And afterwards, when they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, his heart was heavy and filled with this, this pain that was so deep and so real, even to the point, Father, if, it's, if, you're, if, if, if this cup could pass for me, this would be great, but your will be done, not mine. He suffered. He suffered. Stricken. Taken before the... The, the high priest and the, and the religious rulers and beat and, and ridiculed and mocked and, 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 and accused of things that he never did. And then taken to Herod and from there, Herod hoping that he would give him some type of some special, special revelation through some miracle. And Jesus remained silent and quiet through the whole process. So he's shipped back to the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin sends him on to Pilate and he suffers for us. We know that he was condemned to death by crucifixion. Verse 5, but he was wounded, pierced through for our transgressions. He was bruised, crushed for our iniquities. On the road to the cross, he was beaten 39 times on his back where the blood ran. And I won't go into detail in this, in this small thought for the day, but he suffered immensely physically. But all this time, we've got to remember he was carrying the weight of the world's sins upon his shoulders. He was pierced through for what? For our transgressions. He was bruised or crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement or the punishment for our peace was upon him when we should have been the bearer of that punishment. He took it upon himself instead. And by his stripes, the blows that he took upon his back, that cut in deep, we are healed. We are healed. You know, it's interesting here that the idea of these stripes that were, were, were uh, laid upon his back and the blood that flowed. I believe the healing here is a double healing. A healing spiritually. Our sins forgiven. Being cured. Receiving the antidote, as it were, for our sin sickness. The blood of Jesus applied in our sins. Cleansed away and purified. Our lives being purified because of what Christ did on the cross. Because of his love for us. It says here in verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, has caused to land on Jesus the iniquity of us all. The crucifixion was, a, was, a, was an event that was very, very, very terrible as far as persecution and punishment was concerned. But I want you to know something. Jesus went willingly to the cross. Even with that moment in the Garden of Gethsemane where the Bible tells us that he, he sweated great droplets of blood from his forehead as he was under such stress of not just the thought of dying or being tortured, but the thought of bearing upon himself the sins of humanity. Jesus, in this whole process, he did it because he loves us. For the joy, the Hebrew writer says, that was set before him. That joy that you and I and many others would come to know the Father God through his sacrifice. Be restored in relationship with Father God. That's what the Good Friday, they call it Good Friday. It's because good comes out of it. Even though it was a horrific event, 
good comes out of it. You know, it's interesting that Jesus even suffered the rejection of his father while he was hanging on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus became sin for us and God could not look upon sin. And God had to turn his back to his son and not look upon him because God is a God three times holy. He's not mean. He knew what his son was doing. His son was up to the assignment, up to the task, but it was difficult. Folks, let's remember today to be thankful for what Christ did for us when he gave his life on the cross of Calvary so that our sins might be forgiven. You know, there's a song that was sung by a singer many years ago, will he still feel the nails every time I fail? You know, if we have a Christ perspective as we live from day to day and remember the great sacrifice that Christ paid on our behalf at that point in time, when we're tempted and that thought comes to our mind, Jesus paid a great price so that I could live rightly and in right relationship with God the Father. No, I'm not going to give in to this thing because I know it can hinder my relationship with Jesus. It can hinder my relationship with God the Father. And wow, what a perspective, what a way of giving us the strength that we need to walk daily forward in Him. As we, as we celebrate this Good Friday, as we think and reflect on Christ and what He did, May our hearts be fully, fully engaged in thanking Him for what He has done for us. And I'm glad it just didn't stop there. We know He was placed in the grave. We know that for three days and three nights He was there. But Sunday was coming. The first day of the week was coming. And we'll talk a little bit about that more on Sunday. I'd like to invite you to join us live stream at 1030 if you're able to. Uh, to be a part of, of uh, our Sunday Easter service. Again, a little different than what we're used to as far as being all together and thanking and worshiping the Lord. We'll have some special music Sunday morning and uh, uh, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. And uh, I want to invite you uh, to be present with us at 1030 on Sunday morning going live from Facebook. And also, I just want to let you know that Sunday evening, we're not going to be having a live stream. Uh, uh, just felt that we're, that's the way the church has operated in the past. And this is, we just feel like we need to continue to flow in that vein to, to maintain some normalcy as much as possible. But let's make Sunday a day of rejoicing and celebration that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is alive. And well, may the Lord bless you. And may you have a great day in Him. God bless.